In this episode of Hackbyte, we're going to learn how to use Android Studio in order to create a hackable version of Android. Phones, specifically Android devices, are by far the most commonly used computing device in the world, with everyone from middle schoolers to their grandparents owning a smartphone. This prevalence, combined with the fact that phones store some of people's most sensitive data, such as photos, text messages, and access to important accounts, make phones a prime target to be hacked. Despite this, it can be much trickier to target a phone rather than a standard personal computer. People almost always have their phone at arm's reach, and phones don't have a straightforward way to be manipulated remotely, such as SSH or Telnet. Additionally, once a hacker is able to gain some kind of access to a victim's phone, many of the tools that are useful for exploiting normal computers won't help exploit an Android. Meaning that if a hacker isn't familiar with the specific techniques that are used to exploit Android, they won't be able to accomplish anything interesting when they have access to the device. In order to learn specific Android hacking techniques, as with any skill, the best option is simply to practice. However, obviously you don't want to test exploits on your own phone, and buying a device just to be hacked can be too expensive for some people. In order to avoid both of these problems, we're going to learn how to use Android Studio, a free to use desktop tool to create a virtual Android device to test exploits on, hopefully empowering you to understand how Android devices can be exploited so you can maybe better protect yourself from such exploits in the future. In order to make our virtual Android device easier to exploit, I'll show you how to use a free to use app called the Diva and install it onto the virtual device, which will make the phone more exploitable. Think of it as metasploitable, but for Android. Afterwards, I'll show you how to use the Android Debug Bridge to test out some showcase exploits on our new virtual hackable device. In order to follow this tutorial, all you'll need is a computer which you can install Android Studio on. The computer will probably need a decent CPU as Android Studio is somewhat resource intensive. After that, we can get started. In order to actually use Android Studio, we're first going to have to install it first. So you can just navigate to the official Android Studio webpage just by Googling Android Studio and it'll be the first thing that returns. And it should recognize which operating system you're on and therefore which version of Android Studio you need. But just in case you're using a VPN which obfuscates the operating system you're on or for some reason it doesn't recognize, for instance, that I'm on Windows correctly, then you can just go to download options and it shows you the versions for Windows, Mac OS and Linux respectively. And also a version for Chrome OS which is kind of surprising that it'll be able to run on any Chromebooks, but alas. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download the Android Studio um, EXE, which is the installer wizard. And I'm gonna go ahead and very quickly read through those terms and agreements, press agree and download them. And so I'm gonna let this download. It's not too big of a download. I guess almost a gigabyte, but I have faster internet. So I'll be here in a second. Okay, now that Google Chrome has finished downloading the installer wizard, I can go ahead and click it and it should open up. And yes, I will allow it to make changes to my device. And now it's gonna run us through the setup. And then we're gonna wanna make sure that Android virtual device is installed. So I'm gonna make sure that's checked and it is checked by default. I'm gonna approve the default installation direction and I don't want a shortcut. And I'm gonna go ahead and let that install. This is being pretty fast. Okay, and then let's just go ahead, finish and start Android Studio. And now Android Studio is installed and it takes you to this main landing page. So the first option is to create a new project. And this is useful for if you're writing your own Android app, this will take you to the IDE and the IDE and the development environment to allow you to create an Android app. But we're not super interested in that right now. We're more interested in creating a virtual Android device. So to go ahead and do that, we're going to go to this cog and press configure. And then we're going to press the setting that says AVD manager. And the AVD there stands for Android virtual device. As you can see, I have a couple old devices that are set up from a test run and my previous installations of Android Studio. But for the sake of this tutorial, let's go ahead and create a new virtual Android device. And so the first thing you'll see on the left hand side are different um, categories of Android devices. So recently they've included functionality for uh, Android TVs, um, the um, Android smartwatches and the Nexus tablet line. But we're gonna be creating a phone, so we're just gonna stick to this phone category. And this has almost every version of Android phone that's been created by Google since like the early Nexus phones. 
But the main thing we're interested in now is that we have a somewhat modern Android phone because we're interested in exploits that affect modern phones. And another thing you can look for is to make sure that it has this little Google Play Store logo next to the name of the phone. All that means is that it comes installed with the Google Play Store app onto the phone already, which will make it easier to install other apps on the phone so you can test exploits against stuff like that. So it runs a little bit faster. I'm going to choose the Pixel 3a, which is one of the more budget options. So it has a less uh, intense CPU, so it would be easier to emulate onto my computer. I'm gonna press next. Then it's gonna ask us for which version of Android we'll like installed on the phone, the newest version being R. And if it does press download, that means it's not already installed on your device. There is no download hyperlink next to the queue because I've already installed the Android queue onto this computer with my earlier installation of Android Studio. But if you press that, it's gonna start this download and this is a gigabyte, so it can take a little bit, but let's just go ahead and stick with Android queue because that's what I think most Android phones are still running on today. And I think it should tell you, maybe not, maybe they disable that feature. This is a very handy chart that's included with Android Studio, which tells you which percentage of phones are using that version of Android or newer. So for instance, version 6.0 Marshmallow is being this version or an older version is being used by at least 84% of the Android market. So you know that exploits that only work on Android 6.0 Marshmallow are likely to work on a large chunk of the Android ecosystem out there. While the newest version, Android 10, only 8.2% are using that version or newer. So that can be handy, but I'm gonna go ahead and stick with Pi because it's one of the more recent versions and it's already installed on to my device. So let's go ahead, not Pi, I'm sorry, uh, Android Q. So I'm gonna go ahead and stick with that. And then we can go ahead and give this a name. So I'm gonna call this Hack Byte uh, Tutorial. And we're gonna wanna keep the device frame and we're gonna go ahead and finish. And that'll be already created. As you can see, I have an earlier Hack Byte device uh, when I was doing a test run, but let's just go ahead and get rid of that. So um, to launch this device, it's as easy as double clicking. So now you can see a little outline of the phone is there and it's going to boot up. And if you have an Android device, especially if you have a Google Android device, this boot up screen will be super familiar because it's the exact same thing. And then on the right hand side, we have um, these functionality buttons. So it's obvious stuff like a power button. That's how you would press the power button here. So you don't have to press that little sliver of a power button over there. You have the volume rockers. I can tilt the, the phone and also the accelerometer will uh, correspond to how that phone is tilted. Um, this is mostly used for developers to make sure certain functionality works on their phone. For example, if you're if you're making an app that you're testing the landscape mode on, then you're gonna wanna make sure that you can virtually tilt the device. Not super useful for our purposes, but it is kind of neat. They have the extra buttons on the bottom here. And then you can also open additional settings. And th some of these you might be able to find useful for testing exploits. For uh, example, the location, you can put this phone anywhere in the world. Uh, let's just put it in, uh, let's say, um, Stockholm. Sweden, and then now this phone is in Stockholm. That's not super useful, but it is kind of interesting. But there's uh, other features like uh, battery, there's cellular levels. So if you're, for example, testing an exploit that is done over a remote network, you might want to see how strong of a network that phone will need in order for the exploit to be uh, reliable. So there's just a couple extra features that are included by default in Android Studio. But now we have this device which we can interact with normally as we would with any other phone except for using a mouse on our computer instead of holding the physical device in our hands. But now we have this to go ahead and test some exploits. Let's go ahead and get started with using the Android debug bridge and then we'll go ahead and install Diva which is that app which makes the phone more vulnerable. So in order to interact with this device at a command line level, we're going to need a tool called Android Debug Bridge, which should be installed by default when you install Android Studio. And to verify that it is, we can all go ahead and open the command prompt. And then you can just type in ADB version. And because it responded with an actual uh, Android Debug version and not Windows telling me that this program is not installed, I know that it is actually has been installed. Um, in case for whatever reason, case like uh, Google changes it in the future and Android Debug Bridge isn't installed or Windows isn't configured it correctly, you can go ahead and navigate to um, this Android developers page and you can download the SDK platform tools for Windows and you should be able to install it and use Android Debug Bridge there. So to interact with our device via the command line, we can type in Android Debug Bridge or ADB and then uh, TAC devices. Oops, sorry, um, no devices. My bad. 
So we'll just type devices without the tech and it will show us that there is in fact one device uh, that it sees and it is an emulated device, which is good and has this ID number. And we're gonna want to make sure that we remember this ID number. So we're gonna use Android Debug Bridge first to install the Diva app onto our phone. And because it's not an app that is approved by the uh, Google Play Store for obvious reasons, we're gonna have to go ahead and download the APK. So Diva, which stands for um, Damn Insecure and Vulnerable App, will make our device purposely more vulnerable. And you have two options for installing it actually. You can go ahead and download the source code on its GitHub page and then use the make tool on Linux to go ahead and compile it and make it into an uh, APK. But we're on Windows and APK is a Linux tool and it's a big pain to get it working on Windows. So that might be a little difficult. Instead, you can go ahead and navigate to this domain and this app, it's about four or five years old now and it is still, the official APK is still being hosted by its developers, Payatu, I'm sure I'm saying that right. But for whatever reason, you will not be able to navigate to this exact domain and download link by using the websites. I've tried like shrinking down this domain name and all of it just redirects to its main page right here, but you can still download it if you go to this domain. And we're gonna download the Diva Tar and uh, let's go ahead and drag it to our desktop. And I'll use 7-zip to extract it right here. And now we have this Diva APK right here. Oh, I already did it, so I'm gonna go ahead and replace that. And let's go ahead and close all this. And now we have our Diva APK. So to go ahead and install it, first you're gonna have to navigate in your terminal window to where the APK file is stored. And so I'm just gonna change directories to the desktop and make sure that you have your um, the device ID handy. And to install it, all you have to do is type in Android Debug Bridge, TAC S, emulator 5554, install, and diva beta.apk. And it's actually a very seamless installation process. It's already installed. And if we go ahead and go to the system settings in our virtual device, so you're gonna have to pull that down twice. And then if we go to, not battery, but if we go to apps and notifications, app info, we'll show you all the apps and we can see, not device policy, sorry, my trackpad's acting up. We can go ahead and press Diva and open it. And now you got Diva is now installed on our device and we can see all the different insecurities that we can create using Diva. So to go ahead and get started, we can go and uh, test out the insecure logging bug. So, this configuration of Diva, as it says over here, it emulates an app which doesn't have logging correctly configured. So for example, when you're typing in a password on the app and you type in the password wrong, the app might raise an error, like, hey, this user typed the password wrong, which is normally a no completely fine thing, except if the app doesn't properly encrypt or encode the password and it will release it in the log information. So if you do have access to a device, you can type in ADB logcat, and this will show you a complete log of everything that Android Debug Bridge is sensing from this phone. So now I'll say, for example, this is your credit card information, but this could be anything, a username, password, whatever. And two, let's just do two, three, one. Let's say that's my very short credit card number. I can type in checkout. It's saying an error occurred, so this should raise an error. I'm gonna press Control C to stop this. And I'm gonna go ahead and look for this. Give me one second. So it took me a second to find, but as you can see that this information was logged and this error is fine for it to be logged, but it also included our credit card number, which would be a, a very bad thing. And this is just one example of the many different features that Diva includes on it in order to test Android exploits. I hope this tutorial was able to show you that it isn't too difficult to an interact with Android via the command line. It is a Linux-based operating system after all, and if you're familiar with Linux, Android is no problem. And remember to never test any of these exploits against a device that's not yours. That's very illegal. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any ideas for a future video, hit me up on Twitter, at Nick Gottschall, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.